Hello, today we are going to try to fix this automotive part. It is an electric servo motor. We've got the motor with a gearbox and device for sensing position of that cog. It's being used inside vehicle to adjust the temp. So basically it's moving flap to combine hot and cold air to get exactly desired temp. Here is the part number. And the problem with this device, it is extremely expensive. And that's because that exact part is not common. You have a lot of trouble to finding direct one-to-one -one replacement. I already turned that unit apart, so you can take a look what's inside. We've got a motor, we've got a gearbox, and over here with those three legs, we've got just a potentiometer that is designed to exactly fit in that spot. And it's going to give a feedback to the computer to know what's going on, to sense the position of the flap and the motor. So it's going to be like sending voltage, dividing it, reading the value and with a very simple logic. For example, if we set a five volt on those two end, we read in the middle two and a half, then the computer is going to know that the flap is set to 50%. This is not the actual values, but that's the idea. So you've got a feedback loop that is going to tell you where the position is located. I already checked the potentiometer and I know for a fact that this is our problem. What I did, I attached five volts to those two sides and I probed the oscilloscope to the center one and I was rotating the potentiometer and we've got a voltage spike and that is telling me that we've got a problem with the carbon wiper and basically it's going to send a some kind of wrong values to the computer and the computer is going to misinterpret that and it's not going to be working properly. This problem is so well known that for most common devices like this, you can just grab from China a potentiometer, you replace just that cheap part and you fix your issue. Sadly, this model that I've got over here, it's got an absolutely terrible shape and I was completely unable to find a replacement. So to disassemble it, you pull your motor, it slides into those two pins, just like that. And now you can remove that part going upward. And here is your resistor. It go like this. And this is part that is impossible to buy. Most of the common one go straight and they've got a completely different build. But just take a look how fancy it is. So it was a bummer and I was looking for solution. After a lot of thinking, I managed to locate that part. And if you take a look, it's got a totally different shape of the actuator arm. But the device, if you take a look at the, at the number, here is the part number. And if we go to the, our broken, if you compare those two parts, you can see that the number 801, 801, it's exactly the same, the front, and only the ending is different. So from my experience with two-way radios, I make assumption that it's going to have exactly the same internal components, but the end number is going to be minor difference in the mounting. That's my assumption. I haven't tried to open it, but maybe I will be able to source that potentiometer. Why we are trying to go with that route? That's because that part cost 10% of that one. So this is very common. You can 
by that easily. And if we can source the resistor, if it happened to be exactly the same, then we are going to have a great fix with a, like one tenth of the price. So let's try to open it and see what's going to be revealed. When you are buying car parts, I recommend you grab one with the wiring being cut. That's because it's telling me that it was pulled from actual car and not from some bin of a broken parts because to get this plug with a wire, you need to have a car. If you just replace a broken part, then you would not have this plug because it's going to stay in your car. You've got a plug, it was pulled from car that was working and was go into scrape. So it's going to move up your chains of being operational. So the plug is exactly the same. And let's try to crack it open. So this is how it presents after opening. As you can see, the layout is exactly the same. We've got our motor, gearbox, and the resistor that looks exactly the same. I do not see how we could replace that because looks like it's being shot. Maybe we could just pry that, but I don't want to risk it. So it's going to be much easier to remove the motor remove the potentiometer and we can call it a day. So let me remove the motor. Here we've got our motor. Now we can move that part up. And this is our potentiometer. And I hope it's going to be fully operational. As you can see right now, it's spinning freely. So we have to make sure that the hole is aligned properly to our location. So we go like this and we slide it in. Looks beautiful. We go like this, like that. I'm pretty sure we are going to get a beautiful success. I'm going to put the new motor because why not? It looks exactly the same. So we are going to just slide it in and it have to go into those holes. Just like that. Now it's not going to be moving. And the only thing that we have to do is to attach the power and make sure that it's spinning correctly. So let's do that. Since it's being controlled by a microcontroller and it do not have end stop, I'm going to use a power supply with a current limiter because I don't want to break any part. In normal situation, the microcontroller is reading the position and it's deciding to stop. So. Let's try to probe it and let's see whether it's going to be moving. And we've got a beautiful motion as you can see. Absolutely beautiful. It made a full swing. Let's reverse polarity and do it again. And as you can see, it worked absolutely beautiful. Now we can try to probe it with a scope and see what's going to happen. Let me show you the test setup. We've got five volt coming from power supply and they go to the edges of our resistor to the left and right pin. The center one is output and I probe my oscilloscope there and the oscilloscope ground probe is connected to the ground from the power supply. So that's why we've got a two leads on the right. 
oscilloscope is set to one volt per division, you can't do it with a digital multimeter because it's too slow with a refresh rate and you are not going to see any problems. Oscilloscope will going to blink if there will be anything bad. Those two wires are connected directly to the motor in the plug on bottom. So I'm going to feed it with a 12 volt and we are going to observe the movement of the motor, the potentiometer, and we are going to see if anything is going to be blinking on the oscilloscope. So let's start. It's moving and we've got absolutely beautiful swing without any blinkings that is telling me we've got a great success. So let's take a look over here and let's take a look at the oscilloscope and it's going absolutely beautiful. So I'm pretty sure that we are going to get a success. The only thing that is left to do is to put it back. This is how the probes was connected. And the only thing left is to put it back and try it out. I was planning to replace the cap because that's got a broken latches, but I've decided not to because since it's got a different model, someone might be uh, confused if they order a wrong part. So let me try to put it back just like that. You just clip it and we are ready to mount it and check whether we've got a good fix. And we are going to make a last check before mounting. So please change the temp and the computer is reacting and adjusting the temp flap. And it's working absolutely beautiful. So we've got a good fix. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find it interesting. See you next time and bye bye.